Mom, please let me in. Why did you lock the door on me? I, I can't get into the house. It's freezing outside. I'm begging you. You're not coming in, Madeline. I'm not letting you. Don't think that your brother can help you, because he can't, so quit fussing. Mason's gone for a few days to train at his hospital. He's off studying and working hard to earn his license. Until he comes back, you better be out of here. I don't want a failure inside of my house. Why are you doing this to me, Mom? I didn't do anything wrong, did I? Of course you did something wrong. You did everything wrong. You're an unremarkable idiot. You have no talent, smarts, nothing. You're turning 18 soon. You're an adult. So I don't need to keep you inside my house anymore. Well, I guess it's time. I gave you so many chances to do better, Madeline, and you're still so incompetent compared to your brother. Goodbye. Mom, wait. It's true that I can't study like my brother can. I've always been mediocre in school. Mason is training to be a doctor right now, and he's giving it his all to get his license, and... Of course I think that's amazing of him. But that doesn't mean you can just lock me outside and force me to leave. Are you in your right mind, Mom? This isn't normal at all. Shut up already. Quit complaining. You're useless. You've done nothing for our family. We don't need you. You're a stupid child. You only have the brains to do housework and chores. Not to mention how ugly you are. You're a failure and you shame our family. Unlike your brother, who's a doctor, you fail at everything we try to make you do. I don't have the patience to wait for you anymore. Mom, you're doing the wrong thing. You can't just leave me here. I said shut up. The only thing you're good at is talking back to me, isn't it? Can't you at least be good at shutting your mouth once in a while? Ugh, even though you're my child, you're not cute at all. But you know, I'm no monster either. I'm not evil, so... I've decided to hand you over to my brother and his wife. I've already explained to them about what's happening. I'm going to live at Uncle David's house from now on? Uh, why are you okay with this, Mom? Yes, you are. You're no longer my child, you see. I don't claim you. I never wanted to. Well, look, it's already midnight, so I doubt that there are any trains left to head to his house. But, uh, try your best to get there, okay? <laughs> I don't need an incompetent loser as my child. I'm cutting ties with you, so pick your feet up and get away from me already. I get it. I wish you well. Thank you for everything, Mom. Don't ever show yourself in front of me again, you dim-witted failure! Madeline! Where did you go? I'm worried sick about you! I came home and you're nowhere to be found! Mason? I haven't seen you in so long. Have you heard from Mom yet? Yeah, all I heard from her was that you left our house while I was gone. What happened? Did you get into a fight with her? You're still a high school girl, Madeline. It's so dangerous out there alone. I know that you're sick of Mom, but what are you doing? Don't worry so much, Mason. Our uncle is going to take care of me now. Mom sent me to his house. I didn't have a choice. She won't let me go back home. It's not like I ran away from home with nowhere to go. Trust me, if I could, I would still choose to live in the same house as you, Mason. I see. You're at Uncle David's house. I can't say I'm surprised that Mom did this to you. I mean, from how things were going with you and her. I'm so sorry, Madeline. I couldn't help you. I'm a terrible brother. I need to be better. I wish I could have somehow prevented this. But I'm glad to know you're with Uncle David and Mrs. Shelby. They've been caring about us deeply for our whole lives, so I know you're in good hands. They'll take care of you, much better than how our parents have, I know that for sure. He'll feed you and he won't ever hit you, unlike what our mother did to us. I trust them more than I do our own parents. Mason, it's not your fault, okay? Don't worry too much about me. Hearing you talk about our uncle makes me realize I'll probably be better off there than with Mom. That makes me think, why don't you get out of that house too? Isn't it perfect timing? You're going to be a doctor soon anyway. What's stopping you? No, Madeline. If I do that, you'll get the worst of it. Mom will punish you for what I did. That's what she's always done to you. On top of that... Until I become a doctor and start living on my own, it's better to utilize the resources I have right now. I should avoid paying rent and bills until I really have to be by myself. So, until I can settle down, I intend to stay at the house with Mom. I understand. Just don't deal with your stress alone, okay? 
get help when you need it. Remember, your life is your own, okay, Mason? Not Mom's. Thanks, Madeline. I hope you find happiness. I'm wishing the best for you. Madeline, hi. I haven't talked to you in so long. I'm sorry I didn't keep in touch for a while. I hope you understand that I was super busy these past years. It's been nine years, Helen. It's been more than a while. Oh my gosh, Madeline! Did you forget that you're my daughter? You don't have to call your mother by her real name. Call me mom, like you always have. That's what a daughter should do. Why are you so formal? We shouldn't act like we're strangers. Uncle David and Miss Shelby have loved me and taken care of me all these years. To me, my real mother is Miss Shelby. Don't say such cold things. I'm your biological mother, your real one. I gave birth to you. Did you forget that? Nothing will be able to change that. Okay, and what do you want from me? Why did you reach out all of a sudden? I heard that you're getting married, aren't you? Congratulations, Madeline. And your husband's a doctor. Oh, how amazing. I'm so proud of you. Where did you hear that? Who told you? Oh, that doesn't matter, does it? What matters is your husband-to-be. You know, I thought you were stupid all along, but I've completely forgotten that you have the option to marry a doctor, not become one. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. You were getting nowhere with your studies. Now that you have, I don't have a problem with you anymore. I'm giving you my honor of accepting you as my daughter again. That's why I'm reaching out. Sorry, but no. I'm declining your offer. I don't want to be your daughter anymore. Frankly, I don't care about you at all. Wow, to think you haven't changed at all over the years. I'm sick of this. You're still extremely selfish that it blows my mind. Madeline, are you still stuck in the past? Oh, that happened years ago. You shouldn't be bothered about every little thing, you know that? Anyhow, where are you having your wedding? I would love for it to be a beautiful church. Don't forget to invite me, okay? I'm not telling you where we're going to have the wedding, and I'm not inviting you, Helen. You abandoned and cut off ties with me when I was still so young. To me, my real family is Uncle David, Miss Shelby, Mason, and the man that's going to become my husband soon. You're not included. I'll say it again. You're not invited to my wedding. Please never go out of your way to contact me again. The last thing I want is to be talking to you. I see. Well, you're not very obedient, are you? You haven't changed much. Well, I guess it isn't such a big deal anymore. <laughs> see you later, Madeline. Mason, did you know? Mom knows that I'm getting married. I didn't want her to find out because I figured she would care about my husband being a doctor. Huh? How could that happen? I didn't say a word to her about it. I haven't really been in touch with her either. I wonder how the information about your wedding reached her. I thought it never could. I have no idea either, but what's important is that as long as she knows, there's a real possibility of her coming to my wedding. Because of that, I want you to cooperate with me on something. Can I ask for your help? Of course, Madeline. I'd be happy to help you. I'd do anything to make sure my little sister has the wedding that she wants. Mason, thank you so much. Madeline, hi! I'm on the train right now, and I've just passed through Sacramento. I'm heading to your wedding, and I wanted to surprise you. I would have never thought you would be getting married at a five-star hotel in San Francisco. It's perfect! Just what you'd expect from a doctor's bride. Speaking of which, thanks for the wedding invitation. I got it with the help of your brother. He's been very kind to me lately. I'm really glad he's come around. Your wedding coordinators had everything arranged for us. The train, the hotel rooms. Above all, I get to attend such such a glamorous wedding. What an ideal daughter. Look at you. You've come such a long way. That's just what I would expect from someone I raised. Oh, by the way, I'm not giving you a wedding gift. It said it was mandatory on your invitation, but I figured because I'm your mother, I don't need to, right? Hello? Is your phone dead? Uh, Madeline, why aren't you saying anything to me? You better not have ghosted me. Just give me a response. That's weird, I haven't heard from your brother, either. He said he was going to the restroom, but he isn't coming back to his seat. I wonder where he is. Um, Mason, why aren't you back in your seat yet? Are you doing okay in the restroom? What's going on with you? This is our first chance to go to a wedding together. Your sister's getting married today, it's important. We talked and planned about this for so long. 
Plus, you invited me to the wedding to apologize for our fight, right? I know you want to make it up to me, son, so you better come back. Did you get that? Can you see my messages, Mason? Give me an answer, please. Don't leave me hanging. Madeline, you better answer me right now. Tell me what's going on. Something is seriously wrong. What happened to the wedding? Did it get canceled? And where the hell are you right now? Huh? The wedding already ended. You won't believe how perfect it was. Where I am right now, I'm heading back to Las Vegas to attend the reception ceremony. What? Your dad and I are in San Francisco. There has to be a misunderstanding. First off, I wasn't able to meet your brother again after he left his seat on the train. Afterwards, we went to the hotel like the map had said on the invitation. Turns out a room was reserved for us, but there isn't anything else that's happening here. You better explain yourself right now, Madeline. We were waiting in the hotel for somebody to guide us or give us instructions. Now look at the time. No one's come to fetch us. When we hurried and checked with the people at the front desk, they said there's not one reservation for a wedding going on at the hotel. Nothing! Oh my god, I seriously can't believe it took you that long to notice. How could you be so oblivious? You never fail to amaze me, Helen. Oh, do you want to know where Mason went? Oh, don't worry, he already attended the wedding ceremony, although he had to rush to get there. You see, he almost didn't make it because he had to fly all the way from Sacramento to Las Vegas. He flew from Sacramento? I saw him disappear mid-train ride, and that's because he stepped off without me knowing? He just left me there? Yep, now you got it. He told me he grabbed some lunch on the way back. He was hungry for a steak, apparently. I... I don't understand. Why would you guys do this to me? How could you trick and betray me? Why did your invitation say the wedding was in San Francisco? So, uh, that was a lie all along? Yeah, it's my gift to you, Helen, to show my respect to you as a parent and how much I appreciate what you did for me all these years. You know, berating me for how I'm not smart or pretty enough and completely abandoning me. I hope you enjoy your time together at the hotel in San Francisco. I also paid for the train fees, so you've got nothing to worry about. Have a safe journey back home. Keep in mind that I haven't paid for anything other than that, so be prepared to get your wallets out. Are you saying that you actually knew we would be going to your wedding ceremony beforehand and led us to a completely different place? Yes, that was the plan. You tricked me. You've got to be kidding me, Madeline. You provoked your brother into being a part of your wicked plan, and you had the nerve to actually deceive me. How could you? I'm your mother. I gave birth to you, and this is what you do to me? You ungrateful monster. You should be thanking me instead. Hmm. I really do wonder why you want to attend my wedding so badly. To me, that's even stranger. Your motives behind this are incomprehensible. It's only natural that I come to your wedding to congratulate my daughter for her marriage. Isn't it obvious? I don't understand why you wouldn't get that. If that's so, then how did you even know I was getting married? Or who I was getting married to? It wasn't hard at all. It's those rumors going around that made me know about it. You became a nurse and you met a doctor at the hospital you worked at. Not just any doctor, but the son of the hospital chief. Those types of rumors spread around so quickly, it's very common to hear them all the time. You're a terrible liar, Helen. You really haven't changed at all, have you? I already know everything. You got help from a private detective agency and had a full-blown investigation done on me without my knowledge. That's when I saw you following my every move. At first, I couldn't believe you were stalking me, but then I grew more suspicious of you. So I decided to hire a private investigator as well. You were hiring professionals to stalk me, so I did the same. It's better to be safe than sorry. I... I can't believe you found out about it. I thought you never did because you didn't confront me about it. Oh, I did notice, and it was such a nuisance. Did you know how hard I had to work so that you wouldn't know where the actual wedding ceremony would be held at? I was walking on eggshells for so long, I'm incredibly lucky to meet the man that I love and to start a happy life with him. So please don't continue to bother me one bit. That's all I needed to say to you today. From now on, don't ever talk to me and don't even think about stepping foot near me again. Hang on, Madeline. Oh, just wait a minute. Have you forgotten that I'm your mother? Why do you think you can treat me this badly? Hurry up and respond to me already or else. Mason, why did you trick us? How could you do something like that? It's awful the things you did. You have to tell me why you did this. 
After all, I bet your evil sister threatened you to be part of her plan. That's the only way this could have happened. Mason? Oh, my poor son, I promise I'm not mad at you. Please, could you just tell the truth to your mother? Okay, fine. I want to tell you in person, so why don't you come home? If you go to the train station, you can change your tickets to an earlier time. That way you won't have to pay extra. What? Um, no thanks. I'm at a five-star hotel in San Francisco. I'm not going home anytime soon. After all the things I've been through today, I just need a break tonight. Can't you just message me about it? Then you should accept your stay at that resort as a gift from Madeline. It turned out to be a nice surprise, didn't it? You should be thankful for it. Sure, your daughter may have made your relationship a little rockier, but she did something kind for you. No, 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 you're thinking about this all wrong. No way Madeline has done something kind for me. She's done an awful thing to me. I mean, did she have to go that far to keep her parents from attending her wedding? I have to ask, why did you go along with her plan, Mason? Because you would have accepted the wedding invitation if it came from me. You trust me more than you trust Madeline. It's the only way it would have worked. Of course I would have believed you. You're my son. It was also important to me because I thought you gave me that invitation to make up for our big fight. I thought you were apologizing to fix our relationship. Oh, you thought I was trying to apologize to you after everything that happened with you and Madeline? I'll tell you this, I will never forgive you for what you and Dad have done. Ever! I'm cutting ties with you, it's over. I already told you in the past that I have no intention of living with you guys anymore. I'm independent now. I have a wife and children. As a husband, it's my duty to protect my family. It's the most important job I have. What do you mean you have to protect them? You're talking about it like we're going to cause your wife and children harm. That's a strange way to word it, isn't it? Is that what you really meant? Wake up, Mom. It's not strange at all. You belittled my wife for not having attended university, saying her educational background isn't good enough. You even said that she's a gold digger that's after my money because of my career as a doctor. I can't let a person like you who says those things without hesitation or remorse come anywhere near my wife. You don't understand, Mason. I did that for you. I gave your wife a warning to keep her in check so that she wouldn't harm you in any way. It doesn't matter. Who asked you to do that for me? Nobody. Are you really going to do the same things you did to Madeline to my wife? Are you going to put her through hell too? Are you going to throw her unfinished food at her or treat her like a slave and make her do chores all day? Lock her in the closet when you're not pleased with anything she does? I already know you're capable of doing horrible things like that. It's all Madeline's fault that I did those things to her. I'm not in the wrong here. If your wife does things properly, unlike your sister, I won't lay a hand on her. In fact, I wouldn't have a problem with her at all. You can't be serious. Quit trying to justify abuse just because you think it's okay, because it's not, no matter how you look at it. All these years I've been so frustrated about how I couldn't change you and the way you treated Madeline. All I could do is stand there and do what you say. You and Dad always told me to be a doctor. You wouldn't allow any other option. Ever since I was in elementary school, you'd make me stay inside and study or go see my tutor, always one or the other. You never took me out to play at the park or to go see a movie on the weekends. Never. You took my childhood away. If I got even one answer wrong on my test, you wouldn't feed me for a whole day. If you were in the mood, you'd resort to beating me. All I could do was obey your every command. That's what a controlling and obsessive mother like you made me do. I only did those things because I had high expectations for you. You had academic excellence and rigor. I knew you had what it takes to be a doctor. In the end, I was right. Look at yourself now. You're a doctor. The way I raised you was correct all along. You're right. You prepared a good academic environment for my success. But that's the only good thing you've ever done for me. It's your overconfidence in your parenting skills that have always prevented Child Protective Services from thinking there was abuse in our family. Huh? 
I thought you called those services because you wanted more attention from us. I didn't think you were trying to get rescued from abuse in our household. What the hell? How did you come to that conclusion? I can't believe you're oblivious to all you've done to us. You know, this is why I was relieved when I heard that Uncle David and Mrs. Shelby were going to take care of Madeline. I wanted to protect her. That's also why I promised her that we'd work in the same hospital when she got older. I'd be a doctor while she'd be a nurse. That's the only reason why I was able to stand strong even after I was left on my own. Although I left home, I still had Madeline by my side. If it's what she wants, I don't mind tricking you and Dad at all. I would do anything for her, and I know what you guys put her through. Those are lies! All lies, Mason! Aren't you on my side? You're my favorite child, so you love me the most, don't you? Remember, I transferred all the money you've spent on me into your account already. It includes my tuition fees from medical school, every penny of it. So you better not try to get close to Madeline to ask her for money. You have enough of it, so don't go near your daughter only when it's convenient for you. Madeline's husband is also my best friend, so it's my biggest wish for them to be happy. Just wait, uh, you're really abandoning your mother after all I've done to raise you? I've explained so much to you and you still can't understand? I'm at a loss for words. Let me say it one last time. You abused us. You were never respectable parents. Instead, you people are nothing but burdens to us. Madeline and I despise you. We want you out of our lives forever. So please, never come near us again. That's the only thing we want from you. I'm gonna move away soon, and I'm not telling you my address. That should make things easier. I'm also blocking your phone number. Got it? Goodbye. No, wait, Mason. Oh, please, just give me one last chance to say something. You're doing too much. Uh, there's really no need for this. Mason? Please, Mason! You animal. Was this all part of your plan for revenge? What do you mean revenge? I would say this is more like self-defense. We need to protect ourselves from you and Dad. There's no way this isn't revenge, you ungrateful daughter. You've done nothing but shame our family. After all I've done to get closer to you, I paid a private investigator for goodness sake. I thought that if I could just earn your in-law's trust, I could establish ties with a family of doctors. That way you wouldn't turn your back on us and actually take care of us financially. That's all I wanted from this, and I was so close. The things you were planning all along are wretched. Didn't you listen to Mason when he told you that my husband is his best friend? My husband already knows the awful things you've done to Mason and I. He told them. He also knows that your husband was apathetic to everything and did nothing to help us. He knows everything, Helen. In fact, the idea to put you guys on a train into the opposite direction of our wedding was my husband's idea all along. Why? Why would you go this far to treat us like we're strangers to this family? We're the reason you people even exist. All I did was try my best to raise you into admirable and responsible adults. If it weren't for me, you wouldn't be happily married to a doctor. I'm not surprised by you thinking you're a good parent. I guess when you're that delusional, anything is possible, isn't it? You know... I didn't know how useful secret investigative agencies were until I tried them out. They really reveal your deepest secrets. Helen, you received half a million dollars in your bank account from Mason half a year ago. That money was to repay you for the tuition fees from medical school and whatnot. You did give him a good environment to study in, after all. You received a fortune from your son because he wanted to pay you back to thank you for helping him become a doctor. And I know exactly how you used it. What are you even talking about? Are you bluffing? Uh, if this is a joke, it's certainly not a funny one. You better quit this right now, Madeline. I don't think our relationship is close enough to exchange jokes with each other, Helen. I mean, you abandoned me and you were abusive to me even before that. Helen, I know what you did. You invested heavily in cryptocurrency and ended up losing everything down to the last penny. Is that correct? Now you're $500,000 in debt. That's what's motivating you to cozy up to me and eventually beg me for my husband's money. No, you shut up. I was told it was the best investment strategy for my assets. You can't blame me for it. I took the best chance I could get. Plus, he told me that he's an associate of my father, so it was okay to trust him. 
You really believe anything you're told, don't you? Now that you bring him up, I also did some investigating on him, and it turns out he's a complete fraud, a scammer. You fell for a major cryptocurrency scam. You were robbed of half a million dollars in an instant. He really did a number on you, didn't he? You got beaten pretty badly. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! I only realized that afterwards! I wasn't able to do anything about it! That's why I'm struggling right now, and you guys. You children are supposed to help their parents. It's only natural. It's a duty that they can't escape from. Madeline, you, you better pay me a million dollars this instant. Do it for your mother. Do it to pay for all the things I've blessed you with. There's no way I'm doing that. What is wrong with you? Your dad and I worked so hard to have you two and raise you into adults, yet both you and Mason are emotionless savages. If I knew you two were going to turn out this way, I would have never given birth to you. You two don't deserve to live at all. What on earth did you just say to me? Enough already. Do you know how much we've been jerked around at your convenience? All the trouble you've put us through? You want me to pay for what you've blessed me with? How do you have the nerve to say you blessed me when you threw me away before I even turned 18? Well, Madeline, uh, you're not understanding. It's not just me, Helen. It's also Mason. Do you remember what he wanted to be when he grew up? A pastry chef. That was his dream. He was so excited to try to achieve it. The first cake he'd ever eaten was the one that we bought from the convenience store. He was so moved by how delicious it was that he wanted to be able to make it by himself. Meanwhile, you hindered his dream by not letting him eat it again. Not on Christmas or even on his birthday, you'd force him to stay inside and study every day, regardless of it being a holiday. Yet you guys never cared about how we felt or what our aspirations were, not once. No, that's not true. I loved you in my own way, Madeline, and I loved Mason the best I could too. Making Mason study harder and choosing the best tutors for him. You can only do that when you love somebody, so I really did love you guys. That's not even love. You were only forcing your standards onto us. It's not love because we were never enough for you. You abused us. You seem to be treating Mason and I differently because he achieved much more than me. But the result is the same for both of us. We were always in so much pain. It was agony, but we somehow dealt with it and kept going. We won't take this anymore, though. You and Dad can't call yourselves real parents. You did everything wrong, so never show your faces to us again. Wait, oh, please, Madeline, no, no. What's going to happen to my debt? How am I supposed to continue living in these conditions? I can't survive like this. That's not my problem, so I couldn't care less. Quit being a nuisance and figure it out on your own. Please, Madeline, you don't have to be so mad at me. Oh, please have some kindness in your heart to forgive me. I'll admit that I might have been strict to you two, but I really do love you and Mason, despite what you may think. There's no way I'll believe you. Ugh, when you say the word love, it makes me nauseous because I know you don't mean it. Too bad I couldn't take care of you, Helen. I would have loved to if you'd been a better parent to us. But I guess you don't deserve it from a child like me anyway. I'm a useless, stupid failure, remember? Mason, hi. How's your life in your new home? Are things going well? It's going pretty well. The security in our apartment building is really strong, so we feel pretty safe here. Helen can stay away from us for sure. Madeline, you should come over sometime when you're free. My wife also wants you to visit. We haven't spent time together in a while. Really? Oh, thanks, I will. I'm looking forward to it. Of course, Madeline, you're my savior. Savior? <laughs> That's a little dramatic, isn't it? I don't think it's much of an exaggeration. Remember when you used your gift money from Uncle David to buy me that cake on my birthday? The one from the convenience store? It was my first cake ever, and it meant so much to me. Because, you know, Mom didn't celebrate birthdays. Eating it for the first time and having you celebrate with me, it's a core memory of my childhood. I'll never forget that day. Thanks, sis. Even though I've always wanted to be a pastry chef, I figured being a doctor wouldn't be so terrible anymore if it meant I could work with you. Mason, you're also a savior to me, you know that? And you know I'm not exaggerating either. I mean it. The only reason I wasn't utterly crushed by our parents is because you were there. Because we were able to support each other. Thank you so much. Even though we had terrible luck and were born from lousy parents, 
I'm so proud of being able to call you my brother. I feel like I've won the lottery. That means so much to me, Madeline. I feel the exact same way. My parents, burdened with half a million dollars in debt, searched vigorously for Mason and I and eventually found us. However, Mason's apartment building had rigorous security, so this wasn't a problem at all. They were never able to come to his doorstep. They were able to come to my house, however. My husband quickly reported them to the police, where they were apprehended. As a result, we were able to file for a restraining order. They were desperate enough to come anyway, so they faced some serious legal consequences. On top of this, our father retired and was forced to quit his job. His income, which used to be steady enough to support the household, is now zero. Allegedly, they're both working part-time jobs now. I doubt they're used to this new lifestyle, especially because Helen used to be a stay-at-home mother. And it shows their income can barely support their living costs, so they aren't making progress with their debt at all. They're getting pretty discouraged. Recently, there's been rumors of them borrowing money from loan sharks. Now, I don't know if this is true, but ever since these rumors have spread around, they haven't shown their faces at all. Anyhow, what our parents are up to doesn't matter anymore. After all these years of abuse, it's hard to believe it, but for the first time in our lives, Mason and I are finally living in peace. You've really done it now, showing your face at my wedding of all events. Now, I don't ever want to see you come around us ever again. Jesus Christ, because of you, the happiness that I just has had all vanished now. Huh? Did you just say all your happiness has just vanished now? I don't want to hear that from some crazy person like you, you, who just came out and punched me. Did you just call me crazy? What about me is so crazy to you? You came here as the groom's ex-girlfriend, so of course I had to punch you like that. <laughs> you not even being able to understand that is exactly why he ended up throwing you away. Wait, um, I understand why poor losers like you would want to be coming around him now, considering he's a doctor and has lots of money. But I've just become his money-loving wife, and now get to live the life of a celebrity. <laughs> I had to go through a lot to get him to fall in love with me, and then finally taking the seat next to him as his gorgeous wife. What? An ex-girlfriend like you is here for his money as well, right? Well, too bad, because he doesn't love you anymore, and made that clear by throwing you away. But it's not my fault that you got abandoned by him. And I think everyone here understands that I made the right choice punching someone with no money at all. <laughs> you seem to really love hearing the sound of your own voice talking to me like that. But just because he's a doctor doesn't mean he has that much money. That's just pure prejudice on your part. There it is. The kind of excuses moneyless whores like you all love to give. Anyway, he is my husband now. And an ex-girlfriend like you coming all the way to our wedding today looking for money is very ballsy of you. I want you to understand just how ugly of a thrown out woman you are and go home. He is my older brother and I'm his little sister. What? Uh, well, wait a second. That's just a joke. <laughs> so you think you can just get away with calling what you just did to me a joke now? I'm going to have to go and tell my brother about this right now. He needs to know how to do a better job choosing the women he wants to marry before tying the knot. Avery? Where are you right now? I went over to see the rest of the family in the waiting room, but nobody was in there, so I've been looking all over the place now. Ah, uh, Kason, I'm on my way over to the hospital right now. What? You're going to the hospital now? Did something happen to you? You need me to come out and meet you there? Actually, Kason... No way. You're telling me that Casey went and punched you? You know, your wife Cassie said a lot of insane things to me after that as well. She told me that she doesn't actually love you for you. But I had believed all this time that she was really in love with me. And that's why I ended up proposing to her. I'm sorry, Kason. I know that I pulled in a lot of stranger women. And since both mom and dad have passed away now, you've been the only one really left worrying about me. So in order to make you feel a bit better about me, I... I was trying my best to rush to find someone to make my wife. I'm sorry for whatever I did that made you feel as though you needed to find someone to marry. 
since you've always been the one taking care of me ever since mom and dad passed away. I could tell that you were worried and wanted to find someone who you could love forever. And it seems that I was the only one aware of that. And that's how you came across loving someone like Cassie. I'm sorry, Avery. I was freaking out too much over it and ended up proposing to her. I met her through a mutual friend of ours and then we really began to talk to one another a lot. And I thought that she was really the one for me. But now that I really think about things, she might have done her research before coming after me with the help of that friend. And that's why she seemed to agree with so many of the things I did. That sounds like the kind of monster Cassie really is. She made it sound like she was going to make it out big with your money during the wedding. But because I decided to have this wedding with her, she wouldn't hurt my precious little sister? So it's not only me that's been hurt now, but you as well? I am not going to forgive her for what she's gone and done to both of us. Right now you're really hurt and on your way to the ER, right? I'm going to head there later to see you, and I'll be the one to make sure you pay your medical bills before we get anywhere with Cassie. And I'll figure out what to do with this wedding that's still going on. What? Are you sure you can manage all of that? I'll be fine. You know better than anyone else that when it comes to you, I will do anything. And considering that my fiancé just punched you in the face and sent you to the hospital, she's not going to become my wife. me you come back to this wedding right now if you're not around for it then the wedding cannot go on and will be cancelled what the hell do you think you're doing overreacting by calling that light little tap a punch anyway you get back to this wedding right now you have no right calling what you did to me a light little tap on my face if you're really still going to be taking all of this so lightly then you must not understand your current situation huh what the hell do you mean by that i mean what i just said me not coming back to that wedding means it won't resume and will be cancelled, right? And not just the wedding, but your marriage to my brother as well, because he's not stupid enough to marry someone who is totally okay with punching his little sister. I told you that I did not punch you. Also, considering you never told me before that you were his little sister, that makes what you did to me a scam. Oh, I see now. You purposefully never told me anything about who you were in order to set me up and make me look like a bad girl. In other words... I'm not a bad girl at all, but you are. What the hell are you going on about right now? None of this was a scheme set up to make you look bad. I would never do something so meaningless as that to you. Nope. I know for a fact that you planned all of this. You came out to our wedding today in order to ruin it so that your brother couldn't get married to me. You are the worst little sister ever. That's why I never ended up coming out to meet me and cancel last minute on our plans. Hold up. You're the one that canceled that meeting. Ugh. You really caused my head to start hurting so damn quickly. I have zero clue how you were able to stay with my brother for this long while going out with him. That is a real mystery to me that I'll need to ask him about later. What did you say? Anyway, I wasn't trying to set you up in any way. Now what the hell is this with you not even once apologizing to me for punching me after finding out that I'm his sister? That right there tells me that you're nothing more than a monster and far from being a competent human being. The fact that you even made it this far in life is something one might make a comedy about someday. You shut your mouth right now! How dare you talk poorly about me when you're the worst little bitch of a sister ever! I will not allow this to happen anymore. I'm going to take you to court and sue your ass. Go right ahead and give that a shot then. Because I have no plans of forgiving what you've done to me either. What? Oh, you thought that this could be all one-sided? Because you're the one that literally assaulted me today for no reason. And on top of that, ended up hurting my brother as well. And when it comes to those that hurt my older brother, I do not let them get away with it. Also, you don't even happen to be good enough to marry my brother anymore. After what all you've done to him and I, I hope to see you rotting in hell. Hey, Kason. I made sure to properly apologize to your little sister, but she told me she's still going to stay away from our wedding. Sounds like she's not feeling well enough to come back here now. There's no point in having her here anymore if she's not going to feel good enough, right? So please, let's just have this wedding and forget about having her around, okay? Huh? Casey, are you freaking kidding me by saying all of that right now? I'm not kidding at all. I promise you that. You and I put in a lot of time and effort preparing for this wedding, right? 
I really feel bad about your little sister, I do. But I'm sure she wants for us to have a wonderful wedding, even if she can't be here. Cut the crap out right now, you bitch! What? The reason she's not coming back here is because you freaking punched her in the face! You've really gone and done it now, hurting my little sister like that. Who you know more than anyone how important she is. I-I never once punched her, though. Also, there happened to be a little bit of a misunderstanding there. I never did anything at all that should be making you or her upset with me. A bit of a misunderstanding? I totally believe that she was your ex-girlfriend or something. Look, you happen to have a ton of them, right? All of them happen to be with you looking for your money before you left them. And I just assumed that she was one of them back for me. I was just doing what I did in order to protect you. So you shouldn't be getting that upset about it. I guess I do happen to have a lot of ex-girlfriends now. All because of the fact that as a doctor, my future is going to be pretty safe and without any worries about money. Which has left me dating a lot of women who don't care about me, but rather my money. That's 100% right, Kaysen. You've gone through so much with all those horrible, toxic women, right? And that is why all I was trying to do was protect you from them. Could you screw off with those lies now? What? I already heard about everything from Avery. I really, really thought that you were the one for me. Who actually loved me for the man I am, and not the money I'm about to have. Yet here you are, getting ready to marry my money without a care in the world about me. Oh, you have it all wrong. I love you more than anything in this world. I've had enough of that crap. The only thing that seems to come out of your mouth like the rest of those whores are lies. We're not getting married anymore. This wedding is being cancelled now. I've already made sure to tell all the staff and guests that I'm sorry for what's happening. N no freaking way! So you're saying you never even got my permission first before going and cancelling our wedding? How could you even do this to me? And who the hell do you think is to blame for things all coming to this kind of crappy conclusion? And don't even think this is over for you. Me going and cancelling this wedding is only the beginning. I'm going to make sure you pay for this whole wedding. All 30,000 of it. So you better get everything in order so you can pay up. Just calm down there, Kaysen. Please, listen to what I'm trying to say to you. And wait, isn't this way out of line for you? Things should not be coming to this over a small little misunderstanding on my part. And when it comes to things like paying off this wedding, you're the doctor, so you pay for it. You're the one with all the money after all. You're the one that went ahead and canceled everything, so you have to pay. I am not paying a single penny for this whole entire train wreck you went and caused. Excuse me, you small pile of crap. Because of you, I'm not longer going to be able to get married to Kaysen. I'm going to make you pay me a settlement for ruining my chances of marrying a doctor. So you better be ready. I'll also be making you pay for this whole entire canceled wedding, which will put you into major debt afterwards. And for a low-life loser like you, rotting away in debt hell is just right. <laughs> Hold on. What do you think you're talking about? Last I recall, you're going to be arrested here soon by the police for assaulting me. Huh? Are you labeling me a criminal now? Did you just become even more mentally retarded or something? Says the one blaming me for today. I just finished talking with the police after being admitted at the hospital, and they said that they would be going out to get you soon. What? They told me that from what I've told you, you're not going to be placed under arrest for assaulting me. I'm going to be the one getting a settlement from you for that. So please, prepare yourself for that one. What? Huh? I, I, I have no idea what you're going on about. So you told the police about this? I never did anything that should warrant the police coming out here to arrest me and label me a criminal. All that happened was my hand lightly tapping your face. You can say that all you want. But based off the way my face has swelled up and the bruised pattern around my cheek, the doctors and the officers said that they could tell I took a lot of force in the shape of a fist to my face. I ended up suffering a fractured cheekbone, but luckily I have a lot of ice on it now to help with the swelling and some meds to kill this pain. But anyway, no matter how you try and frame it, people can tell that I was punched really badly in the face. Thankfully, I'll be in the hospital for a bit, so you won't be able to come and get me in here. Next up is an MRI, to see just how badly I'm concussed. I never ever hit you as hard as that, so stop blowing all of this out of proportion. Maybe you just busted a blood vessel in your face was all. 
Are you serious right now? I just told you that I have a broken cheekbone, and you're going to say it's because of a busted blood vessel? I may be a doctor, but even if I wasn't, I could tell just how much crap you're talking right now. Wait, what, wait? You, you, you're a doctor? I am. I just never decided to tell you about that at the time. But what you should have been told is about how when I was younger, both of my parents passed away. However, before they did, they were both in charge of running their own clinic. For a while after their passing, we had to let a good family friend of ours run the clinic for us. But once my brother and I finished studying and graduated from university, he was able to take it back over and run it. You are aware of the fact that he's not just a doctor, but the owner of the clinic, right? I know all about that. The fact that he's so young yet is in charge of his own clinic means that for the rest of his life, he's never going to have to worry about money. Well, while we were growing up, I was being raised by my brother. And over time, I became just as interested in becoming a doctor as he was and made the exact same goals. Thankfully, because of him and all he done for me, I'm working inside a university hospital as a doctor. There, there's no way you're actually a doctor, though. You're just making things up now. Sure, your brother is a very wonderful man with a lot of accomplishments, but all you are is a brain-dead bitch with nothing to show for it. If that's what you have to call me, so be it. I'll just have to show you the proof then. If I don't do this for you now, things will never get anywhere, and I'll have to take you to court without ever having my fun. What is this picture of a document you sent me? Your name seems to be on it, and it's a doctor's card for that very famous university hospital. That's right. This is my doctor's badge for said hospital that allows me to get in and out of it. I wasn't really trying to hide anything from you, yet if you feel that even that is a lie, go ahead and look up the hospital and you'll see me on the homepage. No way the both of you are doctors. How much are you even making right now? If you're a doctor just like Kaysen, then that means you don't need any of my money, right? <laughs> Thank God. I was never planning on paying either one of you, but considering you both have a lot of money, I don't need to sweat it. What was that? I'm sorry, but how about you take a look online at exactly what a settlement looks like before you go around saying such garbage as that, please. The reason we are getting settlements from you isn't because we need the money, but because you were not only physically assaulted and harmed me, but also wasted a lot of my brother's time and effort. What do you mean by that? I never once assaulted you, and I never wasted any of your brother's time and effort. I have been with him because we both love each other. Why do I have to pay either one of you for loving him and protecting him from you? Jesus, I'm done with this. Aren't you aware that Kaysen is not only young, but also very talented? Because of that, he's gained a lot of trust from plenty of people in the community. But unfortunately, that also means he gets himself a lot of women asking for him to marry them because they want his money. That's absolutely right. Because in this world, it's all about money and nothing else. The ability to make a lot of money is part of one's status. So you can't blame us girls for wanting to be with him, right? You really are a self-centered prick. My brother has been looking for years and years to find a woman who looks past all the money and loves him for the man that he is deep down. He has gone out with all kinds of women and has been hurt plenty of times by them all. But finally, he felt as though after all his work, he'd found himself the one who actually loved him and wanted him for who he was. Do you not get how happy he was when he finally found you? Th that's right. I am Kaysen's. I'm his important woman. And right now you are getting in the way of our marriage. I'm the one getting in the way. Go ahead and screw yourself for a change. What? The one that ruined all this for him was you, and only you. You hit the fact that you've been wanting him out of his money, and faked loving him in order to get him to put a ring on you. You even told me it wasn't about the love for him, but for the love of his money. We all thought that my brother was going to finally have the love of his dreams and be happy. But instead he has you, the most vile bitch this world has ever seen. The fact that you've gone and hurt my brother as much as you did means that I will never be able to forgive your ass until you're rotting six feet under this earth. Don't think that any of this is going to be over by trying to run away from us. Huh? What the hell is all of this about? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm the freaking victim here. I am. You're just excessively attached to your older brother and love him so much that you can't accept the fact that another woman wants to take him away from you now. Take a look around you, for God's sake. Don't you freaking try me. Sure, I really do love my brother a lot. What? To me, my brother is like both of my parents combined. And to a kid like I was for so long, I saw him as the most important person to me. 
You would feel the same way after losing both of your parents, wouldn't you? And it got to the point where he's the only family I've ever loved this much because of all he stood for to me. Where I can't stand by is he's hurt by someone else. That's why I'm going to crush you into the ground. I don't even care what my brother thinks about it anymore. I hate you so much from the bottom of my heart now that I'll take this fight to the grave if I have to. I legitimately have no freaking idea what's going on with you. I don't give a crap about you and your love story with your brother. Now you tell the police to leave me alone and that I did not assault you. If you let them arrest me, I'll never be able to marry Kaysen. Are you really wanting to get in the way of our love that much? Why did you never tell the police to leave me the hell alone? And why am I now being asked to pay these freaking settlements? I'm the one that should be getting a goddamn settlement from you right now. What am I going to have to do to you in order for you to stop thinking that you should be the one getting a settlement from me here? If things have come this far and you still don't get it, then perhaps you're better off in a mental ward somewhere. Excuse me? Are you done yet? You literally punched me in the cheek, causing not only a fractured cheekbone, but a concussion. In other words, you assaulted me as there was no reason for hurting me like that. Considering what you did to me was intentional and is seen as a crime, you will be paying for me for all the medical bills I have, but for the pain you physically caused to me. Are you able to understand that yet? Screw you! You're not in any pain! If you think you've been in a lot of pain, then what about me and all mine I've had to bear through? I'm suing you for all of it. I don't care about you being a doctor or whatever the hell. I'm going to go and tell all of your workplace, the whole entire hospital about what you're doing to me. Then you'll end up without a job, and then you'll never be able to talk about yourself highly ever again. <laughs> if that's what you really want to do, go right ahead. What? No, I'm not kidding. Go there right now and tell them all that I'm suing you for assaulting me. They will all laugh in your face for thinking that gives them grounds to fire me, and then will probably tell you to get lost. And if there is that microscopic chance that they do fire me, I don't care. The plan is for me to move to my brother's clinic here soon anyway, so I really couldn't care less about you going out there and whining about how you're having to pay for what you've done. But like I was saying, I highly, highly, highly doubt anyone is going to take you seriously over there, and you most likely will get admitted under the circumstances that there is something severely wrong with your head. I am in the right here. I am completely sane and I know what I'm doing, so I'd like you to stop calling me insane. Oh, come on. Not only did you never apologize for assaulting me, but after that, you haven't listened to what anyone has told you about the incident and continued to make up some crazy arguments for why you're still totally okay after assaulting someone. You act like you're only five years old, even though you are in your 30s now. Which, to a lot of us medical professionals out here, even those that aren't directly linked to working in mental health, can see is a major problem. It's to the point now where something like a settlement won't even teach you a lesson. So the next step might have to be sending you to a mental hospital to be taken care of. Huh? What are you going on about? I have no idea what you mean by any of that. Ugh, whatever. I have tried hard explaining to you in so many different ways, yet you still don't get it. I know that the police came and questioned you once already, but I'm going to report this to our hospital's leading psychiatrist and have him talk with the police about labeling you as a danger to society based off your mental health issues. But if you don't want that to happen, start paying that settlement off now. Then at least you'll be somewhat trusted and we won't have to take things any further. You, you can't have me taken into custody and put into a mental hospital. If you do that to me, I'll be done for. That's totally right. But you seem to have something seriously wrong with your head that needs to be both studied and then worked on. What? Thankfully, my brother has made his point pretty clear that he's not marrying you anymore. So hopefully by then, he won't have to have any relation to you whatsoever. Huh? He already told you he wasn't ever going to marry you, didn't he? And that came all down to what you've done to him and I. Which means you are to blame for quite literally everything here. Even if you can't understand that. We are in touch with our lawyer now about this, trying to figure out how suing the mentally unstable works. If you end up pleading insanity, will we still be able to get our settlements? Things like that. In other words, what do you mean by that? <sighs> uh, what I'm saying is, you're either going to have to go into extreme debt paying everything off that you owe us, as well as being charged with a felony, or you'll end up being taken to a mental institution where you'll be closely studied and monitored for the rest of your life. Or at least until you can prove to everyone there that you are mentally fit for societal life again. What? 
So I'm really going to be getting screwed here? I don't want to be arrested, and I don't want to have to go into debt. P please do something to stop all of that from happening to me. I can't. I already told you, right? I was going to do everything I could to crush you. I warned you so many times that now I've lost count. Yet you never seem to understand any one of them. Which means that for every warning you didn't listen to and didn't understand, you dug yourself even further into hell. I, I am sorry. I'll apologize for everything and I'll pay you guys a little bit of money, okay? But please, help me get out of the rest. The fact that it's taken weeks to get to a point where you can finally say sorry to me speaks a lot of words. But it is way too late for you now, so consider your life over with. Thank God you finally come around to realizing just the kind of crap you got yourself into now, Miss Ex-Girlfriend. Avery? I was finally able to get my settlement from Casey. I knew you'd be worried a lot about it, so I wanted to let you know about this right away. You got your money? Thank God. I was really getting worried about where that money had gone off to. Well, luckily she's in jail right now. So we could always go and ask her what happened to it. Anyway, no matter what trouble all this caused, I'm really sorry for it. Had I been more aware of what was going on with Casey, I could have stopped her from assaulting you like that. You don't have to apologize for anything, Kaysen. If anything, it should be me apologizing to you for a lot of things right now. What? The reason you were so worried about marriage was because of me. What? What are you talking about? You never once told me anything about how I needed to get married, right? I understand that. But the reason you wanted to get married so quickly had to do with something I said to you a long time ago that you may not have been consciously thinking about. What do you mean by that? This happened right after mom and dad passed away, so it's from a long time ago. And well, I was always crying to you about how I wanted to see the both of them again so badly. I was especially attached to mom, so I was always asking you to bring me mom back so that I could be with her again. I know that you took the role of both my parents after they were gone, but you were a bit upset that you couldn't really fill the gap of a mother like mom could, might, right? That's, well... As a man, that was a bit of a tough job for me to try and fill. That's why, after you started going to school to become a doctor, you were also putting in a lot of effort looking for a wife I could make my mom. And that's why I blame myself for your struggles now. You probably felt that if you could find someone to be like our mom, I would no longer be crying for her in the back of your head. I suppose that was something I thought about from time to time. At the very least, I wanted to find someone who not only loved me, but loved having you as their sister-in-law as well. Ever since mom and dad passed away, I was just aware as you were that I was really the only one who could really care for you. I know, and you did a very good job of taking care of me. But now, I've thankfully become an adult and am on my own, right? That's why I want to tell you that you no longer need to hurry yourself with finding a wife. I want you to forget about doing it for me, and just think about the happiness you'd like to find with them. I want you to live for your life instead of trying to take care of mine. Avery... I mean, look, I'm going to be the one taking over the clinic soon, right? And since you plan on opening a new practice of your own after, I'm sure that will bring you plenty of new chances and people. <laughs> That's true. I guess things really have changed on me in the blink of an eye. You used to be so small, yet now you really are a wonderful adult. Come on now. Stop talking like that or else you'll make me cry. It's all because of you that I become the adult I am here today. Thank you so much for what you've done. From now on, think of me as being by your side, instead of thinking that you have to care for me. After having been placed in jail awaiting her final trial, before a final verdict was to be made, Cassie paid off both her settlements to my brother and I, leaving her with nothing in the end. A week later, she ended up being found guilty for assault, but pleaded insane and was taken to a mental health institute where she is now locked up. As for Kaysen and I, I ended up taking over the clinic from my brother, and he went and started up a practice of his own. A little while after that, he found himself a new girlfriend and told me she was actually older than him and a lawyer, so I'm really looking forward to meeting her. I still feel a bit nervous about her considering his track record, but I have high hopes for her and pray that this time he'll find the happiness he's been looking for in a woman. Hold on, Rebecca. 
Were you serious when you said you were going to get married already? Before me? If you actually somehow did get married before me, you know that I would hold a grudge against you, right? Forever. Don't even think about it. You're acting too cocky. Just cut it out already. Are you really trying to threaten me right now? I don't see the big deal in marrying before you, Yasmin. Even if you threaten me like that, it's not going to change anything. Don't you know that marriage happens naturally? You can't control the timing. I don't have to delay it. Whether I get married faster than you or you get married before me, it really isn't a big deal. You're my big sister. Marriage shouldn't be a race. Maybe you should take time to get married. No rush. Ugh. I can't believe you're saying this. You're being so snide just because you're getting married and I'm not. I'm different from you because I'm not in a hurry to get married like you are. You don't have many options, so you're settling down with whoever is available. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have plenty of options. I'm taking all the time I can to examine each one of them. You wouldn't know much about that. <laughs> That's perfect then. Just wait for your marriage to happen naturally. As for me, I'm going to marry my high school sweetheart. We've been dating for basically forever. But Yasmin, you would be just as happy exploring your options and finding the best man among them. With marriage, who said quicker is better? It's different for everyone, isn't it? Well, even if you say that to try to comfort me, I'm in a relationship right now that's going really well. I think we might even get married pretty soon. He's so smitten with me. Anyways, let me remind you that the most important thing is which one of us gets married first. If the youngest sister in the family gets married before the oldest, it isn't hard to imagine the crude things that people will say about me behind my back. I promise you nobody's going to be thinking of you negatively just because I got married before you did. It's going to be okay. It's just that my marriage is a relatively early one. Look at the friends around me. Not many of them are married yet, too. You have nothing to worry about. I'm just an unusual case. What do you mean it's going to be okay or you have nothing to worry about? Instead of trying to comfort me, why don't you take matters into your own hands? This problem could be solved if you would just look out for me and not get married. Huh? Are you seriously saying that right now, Yasmin? Are you asking me to wait until your marriage to continue with mine? It's common sense in a situation like this. Also, it would be a good test to see if your husband really loves you. If he can't agree with you and wait for the wedding, your marriage is bound to fail. <laughs> I think it's better to think through your marriage before you become a divorcee in the future. I can't believe you, Yasmin. That's so inappropriate. Why can't you just wish us a happy marriage? Our timing to get married is our choice. It just happens to be that our timing is now. It happens so naturally, especially because we've already been dating for so long. I mean, think about it, Yasmin. That means we didn't rush into it. We actually waited and thought about our decision before committing to this. Well, if you really did think about your decision to get married, then you should think even harder about it now. I've told you countless times, my wedding isn't so far from now, but we still need time to make the big decision. So if you still decide to get married before me and continue on with your wedding, well, I'll be nice enough to warn you in advance. You will suffer the consequences. You don't know the lengths I'm willing to go to, Rebecca. Yasmin, why are you being so threatening today? I, I can't believe you're acting so maliciously towards me. Can't you let me be? I'm living my own life and I'm not hurting anyone. I don't think I'm hurting you especially. You should be happy for my marriage. Having my big sister be happy for me, to support me, is the thing I want the most right now. At least that's what I would do for you, please, Yasmin. You know what? Sure. I'll be happy for you and always support you. Only after you get married after my wedding. Let me get married first. That's all I want. Why would you say that to me? I just want your kindness and understanding. My point is delaying the timing for marriage to please somebody else, even if it's my older sister, is crazy. Marriage just doesn't work like that. It really isn't worth it. I understand that you're feeling anxious that I'm getting married before you, Yasmin, but I'm sorry. There's just no way I'm going to postpone my wedding. It's meant to happen. Hmm. Okay. I see what you're doing. You've chosen to go against me. Just know that if you don't change your mind then whatever happens is on you. Don't come crying to me later. You'd deserve it. Stop saying that, Yasmin. You're scaring me. Mm. 
Your wedding day has finally come. I see that you're going to get married before me after all. Yasmin, where are you? Where the hell did you disappear to? The wedding has already started, and yet ugh, I don't see you anywhere. What happened? Are you okay? Everyone's so worried about you. We guessed that you must have had some kind of emergency. Oh, you shouldn't be worried about me. <laughs> huh? Yasmin, what do you mean we shouldn't be worried about you? Is somebody else in trouble? What do you know about it? You haven't noticed yet? Have you seen your wedding dress in the bridal suite? You saw that it was covered in raw eggs, right? So hilarious. That's what you get for continuing on with your wedding. A nice little gift from your older sister. <laughs> huh? The wedding dress in my bridal suite? You know I'm already wearing my dress, right? I put it on a couple of hours ago to prepare for the wedding. Huh? What do you mean? I could say the same thing, Yasmin. I told you I'm already in my wedding dress and I'm all set, ready to go. What the hell, Rebecca? If you're already wearing your dress, then whose wedding dress was in the bridal suite? Oh my gosh, did you ruin somebody else's wedding dress? No, no, that can't be. That's terrible, it's just awful. What have you done, Yasmin? That bride's going to be in a panic when she finds her dress drenched in raw egg. Imagine the chaos. I just found out the bride is supposed to have her wedding at a different venue soon. Oh no, this is serious now. Give me a second, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. If everyone finds out it was me, I'm going to be in serious trouble. I can't let that happen. You better turn yourself in right now. Confess what you did to everyone. You've done something so incomprehensibly terrible. You've willingly stolen the happiness from someone on their big day. You've got to bear the consequences of your actions. Huh? No way I'm going to do that. Not a chance. I can't do something like that. It's impossible. You know, I'm not in trouble yet. As long as I don't say anything and act natural, nobody would think that I did it. I still have a chance. You're the worst, Yasmin. That is so low. I've really, truly lost faith in you. I didn't think you were this kind of person. I guess I really underestimated how evil you could be. I mean, I just processed the fact that I was the one whose wedding day was supposed to be ruined. Why did you have to go this far? What is wrong with you? What do you mean? There's nothing wrong with me. You're the one to blame here. You know why all this happened? Because you chose to go on with your wedding. You, the younger sister, got married quicker than the older one. If you want somebody to pay the price so badly, then let it be you. So it's come this far. Well, there really isn't anything that can save you. I'm going to tell everyone about everything you did. Hey, no, Rebecca. Just wait a second. What are you going to say to them, huh? What did you plan? You're going to do the right thing and say that you're responsible for all of this, right? And why do you think I would do that? It's my big day today. I feel like I'm at the peak of happiness. Why would I take that away by blaming myself for your actions? Even if I did take the blame for it, it wouldn't make any sense. The only time the incident could have taken place is before the wedding. At that time, I was being fitted into my dress and having my hair and makeup done. I have a solid alibi with many witnesses. How could a busy bride have been able to put raw eggs onto another bride's dress? And how would everyone believe me? What then? Are you going to tell everyone that I did it? How could you betray your older sister? We've known each other for decades. If it's revealed that I was the one behind this, the bride and groom from the other wedding are going to despise me for the rest of their lives. Imagine what they'll do to me then. I mean, didn't you at least think something like this would happen? Could you not guess that it would result in this as long as you went through with your plan? I'll remind you that the damage of the dress and the canceled wedding is going to cost you a great deal of money. You must have braced for those consequences beforehand, right? No, I can't deal with those consequences. I don't even think I would get caught. Just wait a minute. Please, Rebecca. I'll apologize for what I've done, so just please don't tell anyone. Too late. I already told everyone about the awful things you've done today. On top of that, I screenshotted all these messages and sent them to our mom and the others. You'll be arrested and transported away anytime soon. Everyone will be glad you're gone from this place. What? What the hell do you think you're doing, Rebecca? It's been very chaotic at the other wedding. The guests are confused about why the wedding hasn't started yet. The family of the bride and groom are absolutely furious. 
The police were already called to the scene. Fortunately, they responded very quickly to our call. Brace yourself and face the consequences of your actions, Yasmin. You won't come out of this unscathed. It's your duty to pay for the cleaning fees for the dress, the cancellation fees for the wedding, and the compensation for the couple. Every penny. Hi, Rebecca. I haven't seen you in so long. How are you doing? It's me, Hannah. You might not remember me, but I used to be your classmate. Oh my gosh, Hannah? Oh, it's been so long since we spoke. What's up? Do you want to talk to me about something? Yeah, I do actually. I heard you had your wedding the other day. Congratulations on your marriage, Rebecca. I'm very happy for you. Oh yeah, oh, thank you so much. I didn't know you knew about that. Uh, I'm surprised. Yep, I came across some photos on social media. They reminded me that we haven't caught up in a while, so I was just wondering if you were doing all right. Oh, I see. Thanks. Speaking of my wedding, you also had one too, right? Your husband, he's the senior from our hometown, right? Oh yeah, I did get married. I'm surprised you remember who he is. You could say we had a pretty speedy marriage. Compared to our other peers, we got married young. Looking back on the wedding, I feel like so much time has passed since then. Yeah, I remember it happened a while back. Time flies, doesn't it? It's so nice that you two were able to be happily married. I'm delighted. How are you guys doing? Is your married life going nicely? Yeah, about that. It's actually not going very smoothly. I mean, I thought our marriage was more than fine. You know, we were even blessed with children after our wedding. But apparently for my husband it wasn't. We've been going through a really rocky situation. I honestly don't know if our marriage can be saved. Oh my gosh, really? Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. You must be feeling so terrible right now. I understand how things may seem, but you can still have hope. When you continue to be married to someone, it's not like there's zero problems that arise now and then. I apologize for asking about something so insensitive, Hannah. I should have respected your privacy. Oh, no! It wasn't insensitive. Please, don't worry. You know, it's good timing because I actually wanted to talk to you about that today. I mean... I guess it's more of a consultation, and I want your advice on it. We should talk about how we should proceed with this certain situation. I guess, ultimately, I want to ask for some of your cooperation. Oh, okay. Um, could you explain a little further, please? What do you mean when you say you want me to cooperate? Uh, cooperate with you on what? It's okay, relax. There's no need to be on guard. I know you must be very confused about all of this, I will say, though, I might inconvenience you a little bit. But you should know that this is related to you too, Rebecca. Not just me. So, while I ask for your cooperation, I also wanted to come out to you about something else. I don't think you know about this yet. Huh? What is it? Uh, please, tell me. Don't be afraid to say it, okay? I'll cooperate as much as I can. As long as it's not something too difficult, I would love to be able to help you, Hannah. So please, tell me without hesitation. You don't have to be self-conscious about it at all. Okay. Thank you so much for your reassurance, Rebecca. I'm just a little nervous because I haven't really talked about this to anyone yet. Well, the truth is, my husband, he... Um... Go on. Rebecca? Wait, did you really bring her here too? Why on earth are you people at the hotel? Why did you come here? You didn't follow us here, did you? You stalkers. That's actually correct. I thought you were too stupid to figure that out, but I guessed wrong. What the hell? What's wrong with you guys? Stop fooling around. What do you think you're even doing? Yasmin, I could say the exact same thing to you. What do you think you're doing with somebody else's husband? He's taken. It's no big deal. Leave me alone. Plus, he doesn't have any work today, so it doesn't matter what we do, or where we do it. We can do anything we want. We're just enjoying the holiday together. Where's the harm in that? You're enjoying the holiday while spending the night at a hotel with somebody else's husband? That's definitely wrong. It's beyond suspicious at this point, Yasmin. Even if it were, so what? The real question is, why does it even matter to you? Why the hell are you coming to the hotel and bringing his wife? Pretty strange, isn't it? That guy you're with right now isn't a stranger to me. 
Did you know that years ago, we actually used to be classmates? His wife, Hannah, grew suspicious about her husband was acting. She thought it strange how he was hiding his phone from her and not coming home. So she was brave enough to come to me for advice. She thinks that the person her husband is cheating on her with is my older sister. You, Yasmin. The tangle of emotions that I felt when she told me that? You wouldn't understand it, would you? What? So you're telling me that our affair was found out much earlier than this? How? I don't think you've ever been in a serious relationship with anyone. You only ever date casually with people. But when you're seriously dating someone, when it isn't just some fling, you sense these things naturally, like a sixth sense. There's times when you think, that was a bit strange of him, something's off. Personally, I married my husband because my intuition didn't warn me about anything. I never had that with him. But in some cases, this happens after you marry someone, like with Hannah's case. I can't imagine the pain she's going through right now. Let me get this straight. She guessed her husband was cheating on her, and so you guys came to this hotel? That means you crossed paths with us on purpose? Well, yeah, we figured we should catch you in the act of committing the crime. Oh, no. Rebecca, he just found out you guys are outside, and he's so shocked. He doesn't know what to do. Don't you have any compassion for him? There's no way you just said that. You're telling me he's the one that's shocked? That I should have compassion for a cheater and a homewrecker? Oh, don't make me laugh. Hannah is beyond shocked and hurt that this is all happening. Anyways, it's about time that you two will finish up your conversation and come back outside. I hope you guys can talk honestly with each other about the dreadful things you did. Don't be a coward. Are you kidding me? Do you know how anxious we are just to be waiting here? You're all a part of this. You teamed up with the wife. It's your fault. I can't believe you would make things so difficult for me. I thought we were sisters, Rebecca. Did you ever even want me to be happy? You're awful if you don't. Of course in the past I did, and I still want to be able to wish the best for you. But I just can't anymore, not after what you did on my wedding day. Did you already forget, Yasmin? You tried to rip apart my happiness piece by piece. What does that have to do with anything? My revenge plot at your wedding is one thing, and this is another. Let's not mix things up. You eventually were able to get married and begin a life full of bliss and happiness, even after I tried to ruin it. So why don't you just leave me alone already? I won't let things be, you know that. I remember you saying to me when we talked a bit before my wedding. You were talking about how things were going great with your boyfriend and you thought you'd be married really soon. So what are you even doing with a married man? Don't you have somebody else to focus on? Or, no way. Are you trying to steal Hannah's husband away from her? Is it him you were talking about all along? Are you actually trying to start a serious relationship with him? Of course I am. That's what I was trying to do all this time. What are you going to do about it, huh? He's already promised me that he'll divorce his wife and get married to me. Isn't he so sweet? Plus, he's always tells me that I'm much more beautiful than his wife and that I'm exactly his type. She doesn't even come close to comparing to me. And that's why I told him I'll wait patiently until he breaks up with her. You know, he always meets me secretly when his wife isn't looking. He can't get enough of me. We get along so well. We have such a blast on all our dates. I think we're super compatible. You are such an awful person. That's not something to be proud of at all. The husband isn't aware that he has a home to take care of and prioritize in the first place. While his wife's at home taking care of the kids without a break. He doesn't help out one bit. Instead, he's caught up with having fun. A man as irresponsible and selfish as he is, I would never be attracted to him in the slightest. You don't get it. He has his captivating allure, but you just won't understand. Only I can see it. He's truly a nice and charming man to me. When we're together, he shows me what true happiness feels like. He showers me with it. The wife, on the other hand, just doesn't understand his charm. That's why him and I are meant for each other. We have to be together forever, not her. Do you seriously believe that your petty logic is going to excuse your actions? You think and act so selfishly. Not to mention you're a criminal. Don't you know you're committing a full-blown crime? It's not petty logic. The only reason he's even married to that woman is because they randomly met before we did. If he had met me back then instead, he would have made me his wife. And that's why right now he's envisioning a future with me and trying to make it come true. So you two better back off. Don't you dare mess up our relationship. My God, Yasmin, please just wake up already. 
Any man who says, I'll divorce my wife, so just wait until the time comes for me to do it, doesn't mean that. They don't say it with sincerity at all. That's why he's putting the divorce off and making you wait. If they did, they would just divorce already and remarry you as quickly as possible. The fact that he's keeping your affair going for all this time? If he wanted to, he would. Men are honest with their actions and some of them lie at their convenience. You're being tricked, Yasmin, can't you see? There's no way that's true. You're the one that's lying here, Rebecca. Even divorce requires proper timing. It's just like what you said about marriage. That's why I'm waiting for the right timing to come to him. What do you mean, timing? Why would he need the right time to sit down and tell his wife, we need to talk? <laughs> if he doesn't even have the courage to do that, in the end, he's a man of poor character. If he really loves you and takes you seriously, wouldn't it be proper to hasten up and divorce his wife already? You're not getting it, Rebecca. I mean, that's exactly why him and I are talking about this right now. His wife is obsessed with him. She's still madly in love with him, just as much as she was when she married him. That's why it's hard for him to bring up the topic of divorce with her. Now that I think about it, things will probably turn out perfect now. At first, I was shocked and furious that you two were here. But no, I'm honestly glad you are. <laughs> this just made the divorce happen quicker. This way, I can finally be together with him freely, without any hindrances. I don't know about that. A person like you who wishes misery onto people, I doubt they would end up happy themselves. What did you just say to me? What do you know about our love? Quit pretending like you know everything about our relationship. There's certain things that only he and I understand. It just so happens that the person you fell in love with wasn't married to anyone. For me, I fell in love with someone who is married, so there's not much difference between you and I. True love will be bound together regardless of the timing. You sound very confident about this, and I still doubt you. Well, I guess we'll know just how it's going to end up soon. Let's just wait and see. We will wait and see. Keep your eyes open, Rebecca. When he walks back to his wife, they're going to talk about divorce for sure. Sure. Looks like your boyfriend is insisting to his wife that they shouldn't get divorced. He's so desperate to try and convince her. How pitiful. I pity you as well. Things didn't go the way you wanted them to after all, Yasmin. How are you feeling about this, huh? Wh what are your thoughts? I can't believe this one bit. Am I hallucinating right now? Is this all just a nightmare? He's saying that our relationship was just a fling? That it was all just to mess around and have fun? How in the world did this happen? We loved each other so much. It felt so real. He kept telling me that he would really get divorced. I, I can't believe this. He lied to me. I told you so. I'll say it again. If he really wanted to get divorced, he would have hurried up and gotten divorced. He wasn't willing to get a divorce, even if it meant he could marry you. In the end, he also has children with his wife, you know. He can't just walk away from them. Ugh, it is so demented how he's having fun with other women when he has a wife and children. In my personal opinion, I can't be attracted to a man like that in the slightest. He's a terrible husband and father. It can't be. I really thought that he would marry me. He would always promise me marriage, that he would take care of me and look after me. We would daydream together on what it would be like on our wedding day. What is it with him, telling me he doesn't want a divorce after all? He said what's most important to me is my wife and children, the family that I have now. How could he? Aren't I the most important person to him? Of course those are the most important people to him. That's what marriage is for. Think about why he was able to have a fling with you in the first place. It's because his wife supports him and his livelihood. Not to mention she takes care of his children, too. If his wife is gone, his life would take a turn for the worse and he'd be miserable. He wouldn't have the energy to even flirt with other women. But I can give him the support that he needs, too. I'm his girlfriend, after all. How ironic is that? When a weak man has everything he could ask for, he takes it for granted. When it's slipping away from him, he realizes that his wife, his children, they mean the world to him. Children aren't something that can be taken care of by just leaving alone. They're a handful to nurture and care for. Every day, the husband can come home and be greeted by smiling, healthy children. He always saw that the children were okay without his help because his wife was taking such good care of him. That's why he didn't feel the need to come home and interact with them anymore. Instead of being a good father, he chose to mess around with other women. 
only when he realizes that a happy marriage and a happy household can vanish at any moment does he realize how precious it actually is. But he can have a life like that with me. It's just a matter of being married to me and having children. We can start a family together. That's not going to work. He knows it wouldn't. He's aware that if you aren't able to replace his wife and the things she's able to do for him and their family, you're not enough to take on that role. That's exactly why he rejected you and not his wife. That can't be. He doesn't know if I can be a better wife and mother than her because we just aren't married yet. It's just because he's known his wife for longer than he's known me. He's probably already aware of that. Even though he knows that you might be a good wife and mother, he doesn't think enough of you that he's willing to throw away his family right now. You're not valuable enough for him to take on the risk and start a new life with you. I think that's what this all means. That can't be true. Quit saying such things that dig into my wounds, Rebecca. You have no idea how much pain I'm in right now. This is agony for me. What am I supposed to do now? What's even left for me at this point? Now that the future I was envisioning with him is gone, what am I supposed to live for? How am I supposed to have hope for my life? Yasmin, I don't have the right to tell you those things. You have to think and deal with it on your own. What's important here is you tore apart Hannah's heart and her entire household. All of it. Just to satisfy your massive ego. You have to deal with your punishment. It's your duty. You never learned from your first mistake, did you? The way you think, the way you act, it's all truly selfish and it harms others. A handful of innocent children. That's who you dragged into this mess. You destroyed their family. Not no, it's just because I believed in him. I believed in him when he said he loved me. He gave me a dream of starting a new joyful life together. This again, Yasmin, make sure to pay compensation to Hannah in full. Never think about stepping foot near her family again. Someone like you who can't wish for another person's happiness doesn't deserve to be happy at all. Our parents and I have talked and we've decided to cut ties with you because you haven't seemed to learn your lesson. I'll tell you this. From here on out, get a taste of the misery you've inflicted onto others and suffer the consequences. After everything that happened, Hannah couldn't forgive her husband for his unfaithful behavior. She sacrificed so much for him and it felt like a betrayal to her. As a result, she ended up divorcing him. Despite this, the ex-husband never chose to go back to dating Yasmin. In the end, Yasmin seemed to have lost everything in her life. Her family, the man she loved, everyone that used to stand by her side. Her attempts at making others unhappy in order to have her own happiness have failed. All I wish for her is that she goes through hell for this and suffers immensely. Maybe that way she could finally begin to lead a respectable life. That's my biggest hope for her.